Good, good evening, uh, Larry. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak, and uh, I appreciate the audience here too, taking time out to uh, listen to this. I am Greg Plusky, pr Vice President of Greenway Network and a board member of the Mississippi River Water Trail Association. <clears throat> and I was uh, born on the Mississippi River 64 years ago, and it must have got in my blood or something because it just uh, keeps calling me back. And I've been working and playing on the river for a good 40 years now. I've been paddling for 40 years. I also am a part-time river guide with Big Muddy Adventures in St. Louis, and we use uh, Voyager canoes. They hold about 15 people or so, and we take people out on the Mississippi and Missouri River uh, to get them acquainted with our rivers. Uh, we bring out corporate groups, school groups. Um, it's been really, really amazing to get out there with, and get people, newbies especially, to get out there and get introduced to the big river, uh, big rivers. So, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about Greenway Network and that's, that's who I'm really here uh, representing is Greenway Network. Uh, we host the, there'll be a little bit more on the film about it, but we host the, uh, the Race for the Rivers on August 26th. Um, and it's a 40 mile race from Washington, Missouri down. And then we'd also done some pedal paddles on the Missouri and Mississippi rivers where uh, we would, uh, people would meet and we would bicycle down like the Katy Trail and then have the boat waiting for them and then they would get in the boat and paddle back down to their cars. Uh, that was really fun. We did that for about three years. We're hoping the private uh, outfitters will take that over. So Greenway Network which does this to get people out on the rivers. We also do service projects, honeysuckle hacks, trash cleanups. Trash bashes are two, one of our two big ones. Uh, 500 people at that one in Mission Clean Stream, probably another 500 people out cleaning up rivers. And then we cooperate with uh, River Relief on the speaker series in St. Charles. So we've been doing that for about five years now too. Uh, been, have learned a lot on you know, hosting these speakers and getting them here, getting them uh, connected to the to public. So we're really trying to engage citizens with their rivers and then, and then you know, working to get them to go out and help care for them and then also go out and lobby for our rivers. That's really one of the things we need is people to become educated on the rivers and to contact their elected representatives to help get uh, rational policies for our rivers. I think we have a long way to go. Uh, the Missouri River is pretty much a ditch if you'd ask me at the present time. So then one of our main partners in this speaker series is the Big Muddy Refuge, which I think is one of the, the best river restoration programs in the United States. Um, it's now at 60,000 acres. <clears throat> It's also authorized to go to 160,000 acres. So we'd really like to see this continue the, the growth. There hasn't been a new acquisition in almost 10 years because of funding cuts uh, to the uh, Missouri River uh, Recovery Program. Uh, so one of the things we're really working on is getting that program refunded so that we can continue the expansion of the Big Muddy Refuge and con continue some uh, restoration work there. So uh, some other projects, I'll start with this presentation. And this is, it started out mainly talking about water trails. Um, and it's since over this last year, it's kind of, the project has kind of grown into uh, developing a paddling organization for the state of Missouri to support water trails on all parts of the state. Uh, we had originally saw a need for a organization that would uh, strengthened the Missouri River Water Trail, which has a really great web website, but it really has no people or, or no organizations, no signage. If that website went down, pretty much the Missouri River Water Trail would go down. So we, we original project was really kind of to maybe get a group to support that water trail, like the Mississippi Water Trail, um, has support from the Corps of Engineers and other organizations. Um, but after meetings over the last year or so, uh, people have kind of expressed the thoughts that we should have a statewide paddling organization that would support water trails and paddling in all parts of the state. 
uh, not just on our big rivers. But we hope to have this group really, if we get this, we're going to try to incorporate soon on the Missouri Paddling Association. But really the Paddling Association's main project would be the Missouri River uh, Water Trail to make sure it, it is, keeps growing. But I want to start, this presentation was actually developed for water trails in the St. Louis area. And the title, A Good Thing Waiting to Happen, is really a, a working title. That's, that was kind of the conclusion that people came to after, uh, after we were talking about uh, doing this. Uh, St. Louis has the Mississippi and the Missouri Water Trail, so we have a good, a good basis to kind of make branches into that. And there's several other uh, smaller water trails in the area, Creve Corp Park, and uh, at Columbia Bottoms, there's a canoe launch there that we use at the confluence. So, but I'll start this up. Um, so, it's, uh, we've had about three meetings so far. Uh, Great Rivers Greenway is a four county taxing district in, this, in the St. Louis metropolitan area. They have their planning project is called the River Ring and it was mainly based, I mean it was based on rivers, you know, next to it, uh, but mainly it was trails next to the rivers. So we talked with them and met in their offices and they, they agreed to add a water trail component to their planning process and their website. So right now I'm, I'm really happy about that, that Great Rivers Greenway has a, a place where you can go look at water trails on their website. So, and then you can have links to the Mississippi River Water Trail uh, website and the Missouri River Water Trail. But this is our event. Uh, we, it's Washington, <clears throat> Missouri to uh, St. Charles and Weldon Springs uh, race. We normally, we're having about 130 racers from all classes to that. The boat you see in the middle of it is a Voyager class boat. There's usually about 12 people on that one, and that is a tippy boat. Is a fast boat. The, the ones that I paddle in are much wider, weigh about 400 pounds, um, but this one here is probably about 200 and definitely a, a fast boat. Uh, and this is people coming in on the race in Frontier Park in St. Charles. Uh, we have a water festival there in Frontier Park uh, every year with music and food. Uh, this year we have Bass Pro coming. Uh, they're going to Put, they're bringing in a fish tank on a tractor trailer, putting up two huge ponds, one for kids to fish in, one for kids to kayak in. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting. So we keep growing it. It's growing and growing. So, uh, and a lot of fun, a lot of work. Uh, this is, so we also, that's a Voyager canoe up there. That's the June bug. The two gentlemen you see there are part of a Quapaw program. We're trying to teach uh, kids how to become river guides. Uh, that boat was actually built in Clarksdale, uh, down south, by kids. And oh, I mean, there's adult supervision and, and planning and all. But a lot of the grunt work is done by uh, uh, teenagers and young adults. Um, and it's really interesting. And, really, and that's uh, John Rusky in the back. Uh, there's a uh, website for the lower Mississippi called River Gator. Um, he is a river legend <laughs> and if you ever want to see a really interesting website is check out River Gator um, and that also has information on how to to uh, paddle the Mississippi and the fun thing about making these uh, you can put your grandchildren the gentleman in front's my grandchildren child Max I think I'll slip a few more of those in so this was part of our pedal paddles I was telling you about um, the Voyager canoes again and you know the bikes are waiting for them really a lot of fun um, we're trying to adjust the market to see you know how much how much it would cost I mean normally it's about 50 bucks a piece for a whole day with lunch and that's supplying your bike and the paddle so we think that's real reasonable but we're just but mostly most, most people Missouri River do I really want to go out to Missouri River you know so um, once you get them out there, they're hooked, but it's, it's, it is a tough sell. So this is more of the pedal paddle. Uh, that red one is not a hand-built one. That's a clipper fiberglass boat, a fun, fun boat. So this is, this is what the, why water trails are such an interesting thing. Like most of us live close to the river or stream, but 
you realize, you know, how, how, is your, how are you connected to it? You know, you're, you're getting your drinking water, your shower, but, you know, healthy waterways provide, you know, our clean water, fish and wildlife habitat, natural protection from flooding, and more, you know, recreational opportunities like trails. Uh, the natural protection for flooding is one of the things that Greenway Network has been working. We're, we're just squeezing our rivers. It's, we're, we're in the middle of a levee war in St. Louis. Um, especially St. Charles, where we're based at, is a real long peninsula. Almost probably 50% of the county is floodplain. So when everybody else builds higher levees, the, the water is, it gets dumped on St. Charles County. So that's one of the things we're really preaching is that we need to back off our rivers a little bit. Um, and give them room to move. So when people don't feel a connection with their waterways, they're less likely to care for it, which can lead to pollution, irresponsible development, overall neglect. We inspire people to, to, to go out to the rivers and they'll take care of them. Uh, irresponsible development, right now we're working on uh, we usually like to be for things, but we're, we have one of our first projects in 25 years we're against. They're propose, proposing to build a four rink ice skating rink in Creve Court Park in uh, St. Louis County. Uh, I think it's a prime example of irresponsible development, uh, especially it's in a park too. You know, they went 40 acres of park land for indoor skating. So this is the definition some people a little bit of argument on the non-motorized part of it. Some people say that the water trails should be uh, accessible to motorized boats. The Mississippi water trail is, uh, and the Missouri River water trails. But some some of the smaller state ones, Finger Lake in um, Missouri, Finger Lake State Park has a water trail on it, um, and I, it's a non-motorized one. So, and what one of the things that we're really pushing is that this is a bottom up, you know, grassroots thing. Uh, we don't want to uh, be pushing water trails on communities that just aren't uh, happy about having them in there. But, you know, so far we've had enough people interested in the, to move uh, projects going. Merrimack River, we're hoping to have a water trail on it and a couple other ones in the area of Saint, in St. Louis. So. Water trails are often associated with conservation easements, easements land acquisition, stream buffer re requirements, stream flow protections, and higher water quality standards. It's very important that, that people actually use the rivers. Um, it's, more, it's almost a use them or lose them. Under the 301 uh, impaired waters list, if there isn't a history of people swimming, our full body immersion into a waterway, it, it a lot of times will not be put on the impaired water list or it won't be restored to a level that, that you could swim in. They'll say, well, nobody swims in it, so we don't, we don't have to clean this up to that level. So I'm actually uh, in a lawsuit on the Missouri River on thermal pollution right now because I'm out on the river all the time there. So uh, I'm a damaged, the, the, the effects of this thermal pollution is affects me personally as I go out there and play and I've been paddling and playing out there taking my family out there for over 20 years so um, it's really important that we that this connection uh, is made between our citizens and our rivers to help protect them legally also and uh, water trails economically is just amazing uh, you know uh, stand up boards phenomenal amount uh, that's probably half the the boats being sold right now. And the fishermen are really taking the paddling boats. The little kayaks and stuff, the little fishing kayaks are really, really selling and, and getting people on there. And like getting outside uh, is so very important. You know, as we're, our kids are getting plugged in, don't seem to be able to get away from the, the games. Uh, we get kids out in that river and they are hooked. You know, they, they want to get out there more and more. We just had our, our we used to call it the family float for 28 years. We've been going down the Hoosaw uh, River and uh, it's got beyond the family. So now we call it the River Rat Ramble. And we had uh, almost 60 people there and I, at least 15 or 
under or under 12 and uh, at least three new four new paddlers uh, went on this and they're all saying we have to come back next year so it's just a great way to connect the youth to the environment so as I started doing the research on this uh, I was amazed how much is out there so this is the website for the, the Missouri River water trail so you can access it and it actually you can see where the paddling in Missouri River getting started river levels planning and distances I mean you could you can plan a Kansas City to St. Louis trip off of this website uh, including where to camp and where to where to uh, find your food and stuff like that so it's a really neat website um, and uh, we, we hope to actually get a physical presence a few signs here and there and some more we need some improved river uh, access points and better uh, camping areas marked and stuff so that people can find them so this is the the group that I'm on uh, on the board of the Mississippi Water Trail Association and it actually has a lot of support from the Corps of Engineers. We, get, uh, we had a paddle fest this, earlier this year, and uh, there must have been an easy half a dozen Corps of Engineers personnel and a Corps of Engineers boat supporting that event. Um, I don't have the film, but you know, or the picture of it, but uh, you know, people talk about the barges and stuff. You know, and they are dangerous. You know, the rivers are our dangers. You got to know what you're doing. But you can see this that. You know, you, you can be this close to what them and not be endangered, you know. But uh, one of my favorite pictures I wish I could have brought along was uh, from a president of our group. She's paid along and she's next to the uh, Mississippi Queen, a big, beautiful steam bo river boat. And her little quotation is, you don't see this on the current river. So, you know, it's, it's just it's a whole different. I love my little creeks. I got a little solo boat and I go do the who's all in the upper current. And if I fall over, I hit my head on a rock more than worried about drowning, but um, getting on the big rivers is really a thrill. So this is the, the website for the river, uh, Mississippi River Water Trail. Um, it's really kind of worth a look. So the other, this is overall for the, old, the uh, overall National Water Trail System. The National Parks, Rivers and Trails Assistance Program has helped develop this. Um, so it, it can hook you up to water trails throughout the, the nation. And there's a lot more out there than I thought. I had no idea until I started this less than a year ago. And that was even after I was on the board. I had no idea. The, the one that really got me was Iowa. <laughs> Who would think Iowa? They have one of the neatest paddle syst systems in the country. Uh, they have three pedal paddle courses where you can lock up your bike and then drive back up and paddle back down to your bicycle and lock your canoe up and then bike back up to your car. Um, they're taking out two or three dams and built whitewater runs and really, a, and the city of Des Moines is also there. Actually, they have a real big uh, project going in downtown Des Moines right now. Supposedly there's a restaurant there with about a patio with about a quarter mile of view of this, what, where the whitewater run will be. So, you know, I never thought, you know, the Quad Cities would be my, my role model for doing this. And I talked to the uh, director for it, and uh, they actually have five people working on water trails in, the, in the, their DNR there. So we have one guy that, I think he has a hat. He may spend about two or 10 hours a month working on it. So we want to get this going. So this is the state's uh, website <clears throat> on it. The, if you notice down there, the paddling schools, uh, and that really is important. The Mississippi Water Trail just had their first certification classes for, for paddle instructors. So I just got certified as a paddle instructor this year. Um, and so that's one of the things we, we're, we really are stressing is safety first is that we want to teach people how to get on these rivers, the bigger rivers, or any water safely. Um, that is our number one objective for this, is learn how to paddle safety. So they've been doing this for almost five years now of not just the instructors, but just the people that um, 
you just want to do a, a water trail can know how to have more than uh, one stroke. You see so many people that they, they're going down the river and to, they see uh, obstruction in front of us in the front of them and the, the main way they go around it is by paddling faster. You know, I got to go around this, so I got to paddle faster. And you know, it just leads to trouble. When, so you need to teach these people some strokes, some backstrokes, side strokes, and get, get some other methods to, to show them how to get, move a boat around. So this is, uh, this is some of the projects that we're working on to kind of give you an idea of what kind of planning goes on into doing water trails. <clears throat> What's really nice in one of the neater areas we have in St. Louis is the, at the chain of rocks. So it's literally a chain of rocks going across the Mississippi. They had to build a 12 mile canal, the chain of rocks canal. So all the barges go on the canal. That leaves us 12 miles of the Mississippi with a uh, Illinois Department of Natural Resources island uh, nature area in the middle of it that we camp on, bring kids to and play. But so, but this, this is the portage that you would have to do to, if you were going down river. We have amazing, a lot of people from all over the world come and do the Mississippi water trail. I have Tibetan monks. <laughs> we had a group of five Tibetan monks who come every year and paddle on the Mississippi. Um, just, uh, there was a guy who, <clears throat> rode across the Atlantic twice and I went over to our boathouse there in St. Louis and there's this unbelievable looking row boat uh, there and uh, that was his boat that he took across the Atlantic and now he's doing the whole Mississippi with it. So, but this is kind of what you'd have to do. You'd have to trip over those rocks and then drag your boat all the way down to the to the other side and put it at the other, other end. And uh, it's just a hazard so you know that's that's things needs to be straightened out so this is north riverfront park this is about two miles from my house um it's definitely in a poor neighborhood uh they are getting ready to spend two million dollars to uh, fix this park up re-establish a boat launch on it and this is right off that island so that that, that green you see right there is uh, actually part of the island that we go out and we can go all the way around this and uh, panel. So we're hoping this is going to be one of our key water trails in the St. Louis area. We're going to have a circle go around this uh, island. Um, this is the same, this is actually up by uh, Riverlands and it's an uh, area where that, that shoot, I was just doing it uh, last Sunday and uh, I thought I had myself to myself and when I come back back up you got to go down and I circle that little island at the bottom and I come back up that chute again and uh, when I got about halfway back up I came to a group of about 30 kayakers coming down the river so so it's it's growing out there so that's we hope that'll be another area and this is Columbia Bottom so this is actually one of my favorite it's right at the confluence of the Missouri and Mississippi you can see the Mississippi down here um, there's a that thing at the top up there uh, it's the parking lot for the, the regular motorboat launch. And then where that little circle is, is actually a canoe takeout. So this is a perfect little pedal paddle you can put in up there and you can dawdle around. That would take you about an hour, hour and a half to, to play around and paddle that if you're really good an hour. And then we, we, we're hoping to get uh, someplace to lock the bikes up so that people can bicycle back up to their car. So that's, that's kind of the local projects we're looking at to make the connection to these two larger trails so that, that you know, they're not just for people that are traveling, uh, you know, for days and days on it. Actually, the president of the Mississippi Water Trail is right now with uh, five other ladies doing the whole Mississippi River. <laughs> so, and she's not even that much of a camper. So this, this is actually what we have to, uh, when I have it, we can home in on different areas on it. The Merrimack River is on there, but I don't have it. Um, so we can adjust it. So that is the end of the official presentation. So what I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about is forming the paddle, uh, Paddling Association for the state of Missouri. Uh, we're actually to the point now where we're uh, taking bylaws from different organizations 
and looking to f make our own bylaws and then we can incorporate the new group. And uh, like I said, probably one of the things we'd like to see is some, some activities up on this end of the state, which is really why I'm here. Uh, there's not a lot of paddling opportunities here from what I understand. And uh, we think that that, that that could be worked out. You get some people here that know what they're doing, um, can show people how to get out on the river safely. And uh, it's an amazing recreation. You don't have to drive two and a half hours, three hours to get down to the Ozarks to have a nice paddle. You can do it here um, safely. But uh, I, I need more, one of the things I'm hoping to do is get out here and paddle in this area on the river more and, and paddle and get familiar with it and see if there are other opportunities to have some local trails that would connect to the Missouri River Trail or if there's lakes available that uh, we have the St. Charles County Parks Department has definitely uh, decided that they're gonna support paddling. So they've uh, taken one of their park uh, lakes and earmarked it as a paddling uh, site and they're putting, uh, they're working with a local outfitter and they're having classes to teach people how to paddle in the lake and then they'll provide uh, opportunities to go out and paddle on one of the bigger rivers. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's something you have to learn to do to paddle on a big river. It isn't, it, it, I guess you see, you know, I don't, most of us probably going to the current river where you see people paddling down the river from straight into the bank and they un pull themselves off the bank and they go down to the next and run into it and just go down the river kind of crashing, uh, which is, you know, it would take about a half an hour to, to, to teach these people how to get down the river safely and, and without, you know, running into the bank every 15 minutes. Uh, the, the kind of the explanation we have for the uh, getting out on the big rivers, when you're looking at the bank, that river is ripping down the, the uh, in front of you and you think, wow, look at that, you know, I, you know, there's maybe a couple of logs going by and you think, you know, there's just no way I want to get out of that. But it's really like an airport escalator, you know, the ones that are going flat. You know, so while you're, if you're sitting in a chair, you're watching these people zip by. But, you know, once you stand on it, once you get on there, you know, you're, you think, oh, okay, you know, I can do this. And it's really the same way with the river. Um, you know, when you're standing on the bank, it's, it is very intimidating. Uh, but once you get out there and you got people there that are teaching you how to do it, it uh, it's really a great experience. But uh, that's about all I got for you. Uh, I really kind of, kind of uh, came to learn also. So if anybody has any questions, I'd, I could answer that. Or if you have anything you want to talk about on it, that would be great. Thank you.